Hey everybody, welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis here at Game Trade Mini, uh, Media. Wow, I can't even say my own name to my own <laughs> it's Sunday. platform. It's Sunday. It is <laughs> Sunday. And we're live at Origins Game Fair 2019 in Columbus, Ohio. I've got Elizabeth Hi. and Terry, Terry from Renegade that we've seen already this weekend <laughs> and we're always happy to have at our table. And we are today going to be painting the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. Everything all right? Okay. Um, so thank you both for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank Eliz you. Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay, so I am a professional miniature painter. Um, I have been doing this for six years, um, and I work for all sorts of companies in the industry. Uh, right now, I'm currently the studio painter for Kingdom Death. Ooh. Um, and of course, I work for uh, Panda Cult Games, my shirt. Uh, I'm here running demos uh, for them. Uh, and then I also have my Patreon Miniature Monthly where I teach uh, video tutorials for people to learn how to paint. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so can we see a, a couple samples? I oh, saw you yeah, brought yeah, a couple of samples course. of your skill set. I did. So right now um, I am, let's see if I can get that centered there. Um, I am painting some of the Shovel Knight miniatures. Okay. So we're, uh, we're really excited. These are really cool. This is my work in progress uh, for King Knight. And then I've got, I was really proud of this one, my Plague Knight. I love the OSL on this one, oh. so I was super excited. Okay. And then my favorite one was the little propeller rat here. He's that super is so cute. cool. So. And now we're going to get to see your skill set done to a Power Ranger. Dun, yes. dun, dun, dun. Can I do that? Can I, I can't do all that music. Dun, dun. No, I don't know. And Terry, as we all know, destroyed me at the Come On Expo last year in a speed paint competition. <laughs> And this is my uh, this is my comeback. This is comeback. Listen, <laughs> it's it's not about the outcome; it's the journey and your enjoyment through it, right? It, she's so right. <laughs> That's right. I am a huge. I paint miniatures for me to enjoy my games with. Right. And so they're for me, and however makes me happy. I am going to be painting the Blue Ranger blue because it feels wrong to me to not. I love right. Billy. Who doesn't love Billy? And um, we're painting Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid from Renegade Game Studios, where I'm at right now. And I'm so, I'm so excited. Um, this box is coming out to friendly little gaming stores. Soon. Ne very soon. So in August. So if you want it, ask for it from them. It's huge. These miniatures are big and beefy, so if you're new to painting. Mm. They are. They're really big. They're, they're really awesome. What would you really say, like 60 millimeter? Uh, yeah, about 50, 50, 54, 50, 54. 54. It's in, in that okay. scale. So they're really forgiving, and because Power Rangers are so much fun to paint, um, and they're they're quite easy, the, the the size of these miniatures makes it really great for newcomers. Absolutely. Um, to, to get get them on the table looking fantastic. Um, and there's a whole lot of minis in that box. It's, it's not a small there, box. There are. I'm going to real quick <laughs> You, I would say you might want to get started. Oh. I'm going I'm I'm to get through mine real quick. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we can show up. And the box, we have some incredible, uh, we worked with the incredible folks at uh, Boom. Uh, so we have the comic book artists who did all the art in the box. Beautiful, beautiful art on the box. And then mm. piles of minis inside. Piles. There are so many. There are a lot There's of like minis in there. Two trays of minis. All the the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are in there, and a whole bunch of like potties and foot soldiers. There's and I, a lot. we we're and and we have some fun villains in there as well. Really fun and characterful minis to to paint up. And if if you are of a particular vintage, um, painting up these characters is a really fun way to jump back oh, into absolutely. into childhood. Exactly I like to think. into the nineties, right? Into the nineties, right? I, I really like that the box says it's Morphin time. It's Morphin. That's it is Morphin time. Look at all those miniatures in <laughs> tray one, and in then beyond two. you can see piles below. piles of miniatures. This is designed by Jonathan Ying, uh, who is some awesome. of you he's incredible. He's, he's awesome. incredible. Some of you might be familiar with some of his other designs. Um, but we're really all of you. It's so, so amazing. It's, it's so, so good. hilarious. It's so cool. Um, so we're really excited for this game and, and for fans of of Power Rangers to definitely check it out. And, and again, ask for it at your friend local game store. They will have it come August. So you'll get you'll get a ton of real great fun, great uh, play experience. Uh, and some fantastic minis to learn to paint yep, on, yep. as well as like to, to, to perfect your, your techniques. Yeah. Putties are really easy to paint in there. There's a pile of them in there too. So you can really practice and play with different techniques. So right, are we ready to go? All right. Yeah, absolutely. Let's I'm going to set this. this right here off to the side. Is that, is that in the way, Johnny? 
right, it's so a very big box. One, so we can also have some references. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. appreciated. Um, <sighs> so, uh, I've what got color do you want to start I, with? I, well, I've got the pink ranger. Ooh. So I'm probably going to start with a little bit of a darker pink. Because I like to work up from my dark uh, colors and then up to my highlights. Oh, uh, very nice. I so. am. I am a fan of. So, so did you watch Power Rangers when you were growing uh, up? A little bit. It, um, it always scared me. Oh, yeah, I, I was I was that child. <laughs> I was the child who. Uh, so I'm. A, I I have a soft spot because I think Rita Repulsa was one of the few. Uh, action characters I remember seeing is like it was Rita and it was Trini the Yellow Ranger right right who I could see myself in and okay. so it was one of the few shows when I was growing up that I could like see people who looked like me yeah on TV doing awesome things of doing course super cool yeah things. exactly um kicking butt kicking butt. <laughs> Trini was amazing <laughs> martial arts awesomeness and so growing up it was a really formative formative universe for me and so I'm really excited to to paint these guys up um, nice. I did a, a tutorial on YouTube with uh, for the all of the ranges to make it really easy. So if you're, you've never painted miniatures before, Any it's like this? it pretty easy. Uh, I need brushes. actually some brushes. brushes. Oh, Lord. You guys have all the brushes over there. Yeah. there <laughs> we do. Lots, we lots have tons and tons. Thank you. All right. So oh, no. We have Sorry, oh. Powell. And the, like I, I told you before coming on camera, these ones are all kind of beat up. No, <laughs> it's okay. So. Uh, well, the, I can work with it. The best brush is the one that you have in your hand, though, right? Like if you if you you desire to <laughs> you want to paint miniatures, um, like like if 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 you've got these brushes, you want to use them. You can do it. You can make it work. Um, so like don't don't feel intimidated uh, by feeling like you have the you have to have the fanciest nicest tools. No, you don't. Right? Um, Makeup brushes. Right? Makeup brushes. I'm a big fan of makeup brushes for like dry brushing, those big techniques. I'm a huge fan of them. Um, and I can get them for really cheap at really weird hours in the night because drugstores are open. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and you do a lot of stuff at weird hours of the night, like Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping. Yeah, yeah. And I could see that. <laughs> right. It's a thing, right? And when you're hobbying, like for me, I, I tend to paint miniatures. Like at the end of the day, it helps me kind of relax and kind mm. of zen out. Zen out. Yeah. yeah. Let, let the day go. And sometimes when you're when you're looking for supplies, the drugstore is the only place you can get them. <laughs> so so having having a ready supply of, of materials at the drugstore is pretty awesome. Uh, let me try a different so blue here. I'm not sure. Uh, are you feeling a little difference in this uh, primer? Does it seem a little different? Um, I don't know. I'm used, so this is the new, one of the new contrast primer. Oh. It, that's why it's slipperier. It's yeah, it slicker. is. I was yep. going to say. From Games Workshop's contrast yep. priming yep. line. That's interesting. I, So I am a... I'm a big fan of, like, when people ask me, oh, what, what paints do I need to use? What paints? I, I tell them to go to the local game store, and I use what's there. Yep. One, because what your game store has usually is good for the climate and the region, and it it it's the stuff that that folks around you right. have been using and probably probably are, are, are comfortable with, right? So you can also get tips at your local yep. game store on how right. to use those exactly. paints. Um, and climate can vary oh, drastically, 100%. right? And oh, so yes. depending on where you are, uh, if it's really humid, if it's really hot, if it's really cold, uh, some, some paints do better, uh, travel better, ship better. Uh, if, you, if you have... Uh, if it's if it's colder or warmer, so it, adjusting for your climate, mm -hmm. um, your friendly local game store is better. <laughs> better <laughs> they have equipped. the knowledge; they're better equipped to give you that. Uh, shipping paint also is really scary. Like when when well, it can freeze, it can freeze, yeah. and it's yeah. like I happen to live somewhere that's a colder climate. There's a winter where I come from, um, <laughs> and so There's a winter where, I where come is from. that? Terry? It is Canada. 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 <laughs> Mm, I love you, it. You Southerners <laughs> don't know true winter. No, we don't. Um, so, so, you know, when when you have to deal with, when you have to deal with weather, when you have to deal with humidity and priming, it's always good. Like, your local store will have a lot of the, the best stuff for where you are. Yeah. And also, when you run out of paint, you can easily get the stuff that you had before and match mm -hmm. it. So, 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of, of picking up your, your painting supplies, your paints especially, okay. at local game stores. This is interesting. It yeah. is. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's kind of... It's smooth. It's it is very slick. smooth. It reminds me, like, I mean, there, there are some... Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Army Painter's Primer. So we're using Army Painter Paint. Army yeah. Painter's Primer is similar in that I think it's formulated for their wash oh. system as well. Okay, so, so the, the smooth... It doesn't have tooth, the toothy, right, gritty right, right, right. Um, sort of thing. So it, it, the washes lay down nice and thin, and, and they, they seep right into the recesses nice and comfortably. So, so yeah, it reminds me of that. Yeah, I, I've uh, had the opportunity to use some of those contrast paints already. Really fun. Oh, have you? Are they do great? You, do you like them? I do. Yeah. I do like them. Yes. They uh, they're like a heavy pigmented wash. Interesting. And I've heard they dry really fast they though. Do. That's what I was seeing. But oh, that's that's so good. I <laughs> I think <laughs> when you paint characters like what individually, mm -hmm. if you're not a batch painter or you're you're trying something out or you're doing a test model. For me, I'm a really impatient painter. Okay. So having having a uh, having paint that that you can lay down and let dry really quick is great because I just I, I want to start painting right away and it's so important to let let your layers dry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we, many of us have learned this the hard way. Yeah, I've uh, when I first started painting, I was like. Oh, just do it, do it, and then I'm oh, I'm gonna try this other thing, and it just bleeds right into each other, oh. and it's like oh, I didn't let that dry. I didn't let that yeah. dry. <laughs> blow dryers are great for that, though. If you're yeah. really, I'm I'm one of those impatient painters. Blow dryers can help if you're not if you're if it's not a wash that could move around with the the force of the air coming yep. at it. It's great. Like I wish I had a hair dryer right now, so I could. You know, oh, dry right. my base coats. Dry your base coats. Yep. It's okay. We've got we've got lights here. It's yeah. quite warm. That's true. They'll come down. That is very true. It's quite humid here, though. I noticed that. Yes. It is, and it's raining today. Oh. So. Okay. That doesn't help. Well, it's rain is the perfect time to paint minis, though. It's like you can't be outside in the sunshine. Hide inside. Play games. <laughs> paint minis. So it's a good day. God, there's a white. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Gonna mix this up. So what got both of you into painting miniatures? Oh my goodness, that's a really good question. I, uh, so my first hobby game okay. was Warhammer 40,000. Wow. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> to say out loud, because. Uh, that's a meaty game. Everyone says that, yes. Uh, it was, there, say what you will about um, having game stores inside of malls, right? Sure. Games Workshop was everywhere in that particular era, like the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. That was the only like real hobby store, right? That was really accessible to me at that age, right? Right, right, right. And so, so it made that game very accessible to me. It also g was a place for community, so I could yeah. play my games and not have to try to find other people who wanted to play games. The internet has changed so many things for so many people, yes. including the hobby. So now, now it's different. There are more game stores. There are more places, more ways to find other people to play games with. Oh okay. yeah. Um, but back then, it was really hard for me to find, you know, find, find, you know, just the games themselves. Sure. Um, and so when I got in, I was I got in playing. Warhammer 40,000 and, and gaming in, in the stores. And I think that's probably why I have such a love and an admiration for Friendly Local Game Stores. Yeah. Like when I wrote my book, I have, there's like a whole chapter dedicated to Friendly Local Game Stores and what you, you know, how to find a good one, how to find one that fits you. Right. Um, and what you can ask for, what you can expect from them um, mm -hmm. and, and ask for and like what the benefits are of, of supporting them because they do so much. They're great community hubs. And so so for me, because as a gamer, I really appreciated having all of that in my local game store. Okay. And how about you, Elizabeth? Um, so uh, I actually got into painting miniatures through Dungeons & Dragons. All right. So uh, I found Dungeons & Dragons in college. And... Um, uh, we played with miniatures. Okay. Um, I played with my uncle 
He's he's got a group that's been going since you know since it all started in the eighties and okay. or early eighties. I don't know seventies. Seventy four is when it started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I started playing uh, with all of them, and uh, of course they played with the miniatures and. Uh, being an uh, an art major in college, I was like, oh, you can totally paint these, and that's a lot of fun. Okay. And, of course, my uncle saw it as an opportunity to have his miniatures painted. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> Arts and crafts time has been right. extended exactly. by. Exactly. And uh, having painted miniatures on the table. So mm. he's, he, he saw that opportunity. I think he, he embraced it. I and would I, have as well. Yes. <laughs> and so I have him to thank um, for uh, kind of getting me into the hobby. Cool. Uh, yeah. So that was going to be my follow-up question is, do you have a, uh, a degree in art based on your, your skill set? Yeah, you know? yeah. I do. And then my minor was actually um, art history. Okay. Oh, wow. So, so I could definitely carry on a, conver a, a conversation about art and probably make everyone fall asleep. <laughs> All right. Now, um, <clears throat> was painting in this format uh what you were most known for um so yeah yes because um i did do a lot of i did a lot of ceramic and um canvas painting in college okay but this is really what i decided that i wanted to settle into and then it became a job <laughs> nice. um and terry mentioned uh you know local gaming stores and actually i got my first job uh as a painter through my oh. local game stores, I went out and I made friends. And then I was like, I really enjoy painting these. And the guys there were like, oh, hey, we'll pay you to paint some of our Warhammer miniatures. Yep. So so that's also, I, I would definitely say local gaming stores, see, there's another benefit. Another benefit. You can, community is such a huge, and there's so many benefits to being mm. a part of a community in a local game store. Yeah. Um, so it's really, it's really a great hub for that. Absolutely. This is. Oh, this look red, at this you. red just isn't really like. You've got a you've and you're using a really small brush. Yeah, I did it with a larger brush first, and now I'm trying to get those like nice lines against the triangular. Ah, area. you just you just press it up against it. I'm an <laughs> over painter like crazy. I like to overcorrect, and then I just I come over on top of that stuff anyways. I'm like, <laughs> ain't no big thing. I think that's part of it too. Like when there's. One of the things I learned very early on when I started painting was like trying to match up lines was probably the thing I hated the most. Right. Okay. And so when if you overpaint, you can always do the lines afterwards and not try to match them at the border together. Okay. And so so if you extend if you extend the paint a little bit beyond the border, you you can then correct afterwards and and when you put that second color on, it's easier to it's easier to get Get, get it looking clean okay. uh, when the two colors match. Oh, my. They look so shiny. They do. They look great. And they wear paint well. Again, the ranges are so much fun to paint because they're so bright. And it's really like two colors <laughs> for the most <laughs> it's part. It's true. But it's I, true. It doesn't need much, right? I'll say for tutorial purposes, Yeah. if you wanted to teach someone, this is how you paint red on a miniature, do it You've here. got a lot of red. You've pink. got a lot exactly. of red. blue. Yellow is one of the hardest p colors to paint mm -hmm. for me, and I think for a lot of others. Yeah. Uh, but the mm -hmm. yellow ranger. Yellow ranger. And you'll really learn. Because of the size, you're going to get a really good visual of it as well. And you, you'll learn how, I think, the one thing that it's really hard to translate when you're teaching people how to paint online. Because right. um, there's some things I have a hard time teaching, and I, it just comes from time, is knowing and anticipating how paint is going to lay and right. dry on the model. Right. And and it's hard because I can't I'm not sitting with that person, so I can't see how they're applying the paint to the yeah. model as well. So but you can you develop that intuition right. the more you paint. Right. And right, you'll get right. better and better and better, which is really like the most encouraging thing. Mm -hmm. The next miniature you paint will be better than the one you did before. And so so instead of like focusing and trying to get perfect on that first one, yeah, just start exactly. on another. Exactly. And I tell everybody to hold on to some of those older miniatures or if you paint, uh, you know, painting over a year's time mm. to go back and put that miniature that you painted in January next to the miniature you then painted all the way around in December. Right. And that's actually really encouraging, right? You so. see, Absolutely. it's hard to see the progress when 
the only way you're measuring it is by looking at a model two inches from your face. Right, exactly. Um, you can really, you, you really get a sense of how far you've come. Right. When you're looking at, at your miniatures overall over time, even like if you're starting on a big batch of stuff, when you get, when you get to the last miniature in that big batch and you compare it to your first, you can see the difference. Which oh, is, yeah. it's a huge thing. It yeah, is. I've seen that in, uh, I'm working on a lot of like uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I, I was going to say, I see you guys doing the stream. Yeah. So it's like when I'm working on, you know, the Lannisters, that first Lannister I do and the last Lannister I do right. are two different Lannisters. They're at, well, <laughs> it's nice to you because, you know, especially in games where there's a lot of uh, similarities in the sculpts. Mm -hmm. If you paint them, you paint them separately. Not only do you like, you can make them unique and different every time, so they don't look all like the same guy. So this particular game, uh, Heroes of the Grid, yes. the Power Rangers game, what is it based off of? It, well, it's I mean, we know it's based off Power Rangers, <laughs> Power but is it based Rangers. off any other, like? Oh, I know there's a comic book series out there right now. There is a boom comic book series out, and it's great. We so um, we. We're really excited about it. There, especially uh, one of the expansions for this game, which will be available in August, uh, is called the Shattered Grid, and that is off the storyline out of the comic books. Too. Okay. There are other Rangers in that pack as well, whose story evolves mm. over time. And so, from the show, when translated into comics, a lot of the characters you you remember as a kid, th they show up again. They're there, mm. and they have they have story arcs as well, which is really wonderful. And so it, it's like. Those stories are, the nice thing with the comic books is, as a fan who's older now, I can enjoy those story arcs. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't feel as kiddy as, as like the after school show, right? Right, exactly. Like this is a, you know, this is a. With the great pyrotechnics, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like diving. Diving and like incredible. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's the thing is, is you now have beautiful art yeah. and exactly. beautiful beautiful moments and there's room for the story to grow like uh, the episode shows when you're those those first ones when you watched after school they were all basically standalone episodes of yep. standalone it was, it moments was monster of, stories. of the week monster of the week exactly mm -hmm. and you you'd watch them and, and enjoy them as standalone individual stories with comics that medium allows for more narrative more deep storytelling more immersive storytelling and so as as an adult fan now you can really appreciate it and enjoy it right and so so we we took some of those those fantastic cues from from the comics and those storylines we capture some of those storylines right. in the game as well so so i'm really excited for that too because i think that that well, that It'll help people who are discovering yeah. stuff now. That means that you're going to have the villain, the big villain from Shattered Grid, right? <laughs> we have, yeah, well, we, we will. Well, the, the Shattered Grid box is a really huge box. We did an unboxing of it on our okay. Twitch channel, uh, Play Renegade, yeah. on Twitch. And and that that box in and of itself is like, it's massive and it's full of, it's full of other rangers who've mm -hmm. done other other evolved rangers and a whole bunch of other foot soldiers so we've got a lot of stuff in there that's really exciting and we also have we uh coming to your game stores we have the big megazord deluxe oh, figure no coming way. um so that'll be available when when it launches in august and uh, cyclopsis is going to be there and they stand no kidding uh, this tall on the yes, please. oh wow yes please yeah and i'm really excited because I know a lot of the fans were really uh, interested to see how the, the contrast paints will work on, on those guys, too, because yeah. they're so big, right? And well, that would make it paint, easy. It makes right? it so easy. Yeah. You can just lay the paint down. And so so it's going to be really fun to play with those and, and try to try to try them out on those big, beefy models. And and it, the nice thing is, so I, I'm a fan of big models, but I'm not a fan of building them. And That's all of these fair. miniatures come pre-assembled. Yeah. So I'm so <laughs> thrilled about that. Even the big ones. The super big ones. So all right. they're ready. You can play them right away, too. So that's the other okay. thing. You don't have to build them. You can play the game right away. Um, even these rangers in the box, they come, they come 
uh, pre-colored in pre-colored plastic. Oh. So even if you don't paint them right away, you can still play them. Those rangers will are. still pop on the table and right. know who they are. And so, so they still look the the game looks fantastic on the table as well. So it's a it's a really exciting time to be a a board game fan and a Power Rangers fan. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so there's there's a lot of fun stuff happening. I'm Ooh. like I'm looking at the box so I can get my colors right here. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I guess I have the benefit of having done these guys before, hey? Uh, yeah, that's cheating. It's <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. They are very nice. They they're just they're really it's it's nice to have such big models. Right. You know, big exactly. surfaces to work on a um and the there aren't a lot of like fiddly details that are really a little a little more challenging. So right. it's really fun. I'm gonna let these guys dry. Whew. Yeah, and I'm not upset at the monochromatic aspect of it either. No, it's like <laughs> it's like thank you. <laughs> it, it's oh, thank you. One of the things is um, oh yeah, I got a fan card to to fan <laughs> off the model. Um, it's <gasps> one of the things that that I love about these these models too is as you paint your models that's when you pick up the paints for them yep. like I you don't need to buy a ton of them you can just pick up the colors that you right. need exactly yeah. for the ranger you're painting or the the, the, the villain you're painting yeah. you could you could do a three color scheme you can do a three color scheme exactly. it's really simple it's exactly. really straightforward it doesn't have to be crazy or scary or or mm -hmm. any of that stuff and and it it's nice because then you you don't feel pressured to to get a ton of paints that you won't use. Like, uh, right. I'm, I'm a big fan. I have way too many paints at home. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Yeah. I think we all might have too many paints It's, at it's home. a problem. It's like. It's I <laughs> do have too many. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's no lie. There are, there yeah, are paints that I don't use enough. There are paints where I, I just got them because I, I like the way they look on the shelf, but I didn't have a project in mind for them. Okay. And, and then those paints just sit in my, my paint jars and they don't get loved or used, mm -hmm. and and I feel like you know it, it's better, especially if you're starting out and right. you're new to to painting miniatures. So you don't feel overwhelmed. You don't yeah, feel overwhelmed. Get, 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 right. the, get, get what, what you're you need gonna or use. What you think you're gonna use. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, get what you need in that moment, as opposed to like thinking, oh, I might do this and I might do that. You'll be surprised right. how far your paint can go as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I've had paint bottles that I started with uh, six years ago, yeah. and I still have them. I still have what? them and use them. And yep. like you don't need. It, it's funny because um, when you get the little bottles, they feel like this doesn't seem like a lot of paint. Like it looking doesn't. at it in the bottle on the shelf, right? But, but it lasts. It goes yeah. so far. You yeah. only need like a pea-sized amount on your palette. Um, and that's like my problem. I, oh, you I, I'm like, a lot oh, I'm gonna go, and it's like, oh crap! There's oh, no. there's yeah. a teaspoon. Um, but yeah, you only need like a pea size amount, and you can always add more to your palette, um, as you need it, and it also keeps your paint from drying out on your palette. So, it goes a long way because if you if you if you're patient with it and you're just sparing with it. So you two go to a lot of conventions, yeah. Yes. A few. A few. Yeah, just, few. just a few. Just so a couple. <laughs> in your convention uh, tours, mm -hmm. as, it, as it were, have you had the opportunity to meet any of the rangers? Yes, actually. Uh, I, I believe uh, we had the opportunity to meet the Black Ranger, I want to say, at Dragon Con. Oh. Uh, yeah, he was there doing signings. So... Okay. I know they do travel around. They do, yeah. Yes. Well, Ranger Stop is in Atlanta next weekend. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. This is a, I know the Rangers sometimes make it to stop there. When we did Geek and Sun, uh, when we did some plays of this game on Geek and Sundry, we had uh, three of the actors who played the Blue Ranger oh, across wow. the show <laughs> okay. um, playing not the Blue Ranger. And then we had uh, Xander uh, from Geek and Sundry, who is a super fan of Power Rangers. Oh, that's awesome. Um, play, play as the Blue Ranger, and nice. so it was really fun. It was a really fun, fun experience. So that sounds like it was a blast. It was. It's a. It was a fun playthrough, and it's a. It was fun to see these Rangers play play this <laughs> game, right? So right. it's just it's you. You get those moments where where you know fandom and and 
and gaming meet. And it's, it's just a nice immersive moment. Yeah, absolutely. I had the opportunity to meet uh, Jason David Frank. Oh! When I first got into this space, um, I was at Wizard World Philly. Oh! And I was doing interviews, and I went up and said, hey, D Jason, can I uh, get an interview with you real quick? And oh, he's like, wow. yeah, no problem. And like, he stopped his line, and I apologized to everybody in line. I was like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's okay. And uh, he's like, I love you guys. And uh, <gasps> we shot, shot the interview, and he was super cool. And uh, my the the camera person I had at that time, not Johnny, because Johnny is a wizard, <laughs> um, did not turn it on so that we could get the sound. Oh no! Oh, no. You lost the sound. Oh, oh and no! It's okay. It's only an interview. It's just talking no, pictures. No, then. and he <laughs> caught it during the interview. <laughs> at the end, he's like, "Oh, I didn't capture any audio." And Jason's like, "No problem. Let's do it again." Oh and yeah! Yeah, he was so cool, and we just went right right into it again, That's and it was. So like nice. fast and what just because we had already basically we did a run through and it was just really quick and awesome. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah. So I I have mad respect for him for taking time out for you know the for opportunity, the opportunity to, yeah, to, to come up and, and do that and connect uh, with fans in, yeah. in interview format. That's awesome! Yeah. Oh my goodness! So I am uh, I'm throwing some blue here as my shadows. Ooh, oh yeah, what? Oh here what? On my white. Mm. Look at you all fancy. All right. So I know for a lot of individuals that are probably uh, generation-ish, like when I say generation, like a, a decade younger than me, mm -hmm. yeah. we're probably more into this. Yes. Because yes. This, was, this was like their after school right. show. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, what was your after school show that uh, you would watch? Oh, uh, what was yours? Well, it was a lot of, well, I watched a lot of Power Rangers, again, because right. it was just like, there were no other female heroes who were, who had my skin color, my hair right. color on TV at the time. Yeah. So, like, I, I, when it was, like, playtime on the playground, I was always playing Trini as a Yellow Ranger. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I think. I think the way it was television aired in Canada, it was like there was Power Rangers and then there was Sailor Moon. <gasps> oh Sailor yeah, yeah, that's right. Sailor I forgot. Moon. Sailor Moon was a All thing. Right. That's right. Sailor Moon was that's a thing. Right. That was my that was my era. That okay. was my my. Uh, that was also like the Saturday morning cartoon era for me. Was was, uh, man, uh, you you had the Japanese import shows, Dragon Ball Z coming in, okay. and so I think that Sentai sensibility was really, <laughs> it, it kind of it. It invaded my childhood. All the all the Japanese influence yeah. there. Yeah. Well, it's funny because yep. I learned. So this is the thing I learned about Power Rangers uh, a few years ago: is the colors actually mean something to each character? Do like, they really? So um, there's archetypes associated with the color. So the color of the ranger right uh, determines the personality, and then you s uh, then you see kind of it uh, infiltrate other properties. So right, right, right. For example, the Red Ranger in most Sentai. Um, is the leader? Oh, okay. Right? Okay. So they're they're often like a little stubborn, a little rash. Right. Um, uh, they hot headed. Hot headed. Yes. yes. Um, they, but they they often show leadership qualities. Uh, they're often, um, if they're not the leader, they're often depicted as often very angry okay. and grumpy okay. and because, you know, they should be the leader by all yeah. accounts. Um, so in Power Rangers, Red was the leader. That made sense. Um, blue is almost always second in command. Okay. So when you have a Blue Ranger, they're always the one who's calmer. They're the one who is more level-headed, but they're usually the intellectual one. They're the smarter that one. That makes so sense. If you're if you watch Power Rangers, you know Billy is the Blue Ranger, right? You know he's he he would be a great leader, but right he doesn't have the ambition for right, it. Right, 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 right. Um, and then you know yellow and blue, they have. You know, they're often the they're considered the the powerful. They have power. They're powerful, mm -hmm. um, and then the pink one is usually the girl. So that's the structure of Sentai. But then when you see it infiltrate into other parts of of uh, cultural elements, you look at say Ninja Turtles. Right. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the red. Okay. The, the blue. So the Red Ranger is. Not the leader in, in Ninja Turtles. Right, but exactly. It's the hothead. But he's the, the hothead. hothead. And he's always angry and he's always bossy. <laughs> and always no. feels like he's the right Dang one. Dang it, Ralph. 
in Sailor Moon, it's the same thing. Oh, Pink Ray. is the girl. That's right. Blue is second in command. That's He's right. calm Be and Venus. zen. Yep, yep. Amy. And the, or, uh, Amy and yep. Mar Mercury. Yep. And, and Mars is red. Right. And uh, she's the hothead, and she's not the leader. So you see, and you, so you see these little elements of mm -hmm. Sentai's influence in all Other sorts of cartoons. cultural elements. It's really neat. It's really neat. It was really, when I was first told, like when that, that, that element was was told to me. I was like, "Whoa!" And I was, uh, my mind is blown. This many, uh, this many days old uh, <laughs> when I learned that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> One, uh, yes, this day. This day. <laughs> so for me, for uh, Saturday morning cartoons, um, it was uh, Garfield and Friends. Oh, okay. yeah. And then the uh, <laughs> the really terrible Spider-Man cartoon. When you oh, say I real, remember. Which, like the one where, you know, you MTV get the memes one? from now on the internet. You're like, pointing at me at the end of the movie. Right, right. Oh. Or you're there's you sitting, you're at a, at me. Yeah, you're sitting at a desk and there's a picture of Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, with Spider-Man sitting at the desk. Okay. <laughs> huh. That was the, so. that's the one with the song, right? I believe so. That's yes. the one with the song that everyone yes. knows and can sing. Yes. So, so those were those were the two that I remember the most. Okay, it's a very ra roundabout way of asking us how old we are, Rick. Yeah, it pretty well, much. Well, it's also <laughs> a roundabout way of being able to connect with our audience of who course. might also be associating themselves, like, "Hey, Terry is my age ish." Ish. <laughs> ish. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about mine. Oh. <laughs> Well, what, what kind of cartoons? Were you like a He-Man kind of guy? So He-Man existed when I was uh, coming up. I was like in high school. Oh, okay. very cool. Okay. So, um, and, and some middle school stuff. Um, but like my childhood mm -hmm. cartoons were uh, Space Ghost, the Herculoids. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Space um, Ghost, Coast oh, to Coast. Oh, the Hanna-Barbera <laughs> stuff. Yep. Of, yep. 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 Uh, Wacky Racers. Wacky yes, Racers. Yes, with Muttley. Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of um, Johnny Quest. Yep. So. Well, that's fun. Yeah. That is fun. So you're, you're what we would call Silver Age then. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take she it. She said it, I didn't. I'll take it. More silverback <laughs> than anything. <laughs> true, also true. Um, but it's also kind of neat to see that a lot of our pop culture fandoms of our youth, like the Power Rangers, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Wacky Racers, yep. and others are finding their way into they our are. space, like you said, mm -hmm. into the board gaming space, into the tabletop space which yeah. is a great way to bring maybe the someone that's not a board gamer right. into our space. Right. Someone who likes generation. Power Rangers right. might come in and go, wow, I didn't realize how much fun I like. I have playing board games. Right. I missed this. Right. And yeah. then they're like, wait a minute. What's that over there? <laughs> and then they're like, wait a minute. These what's aren't, that over there? These aren't the board games I remember from when I was a kid. Yeah. Was right. the thing. Exactly. Yeah. Right? They're, they're a different experience. And it's, for me, it's fun, too, because being able to share uh, board games that have tie-ins to the things I grew up with it lets me share them with my daughter. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day yes. to all those fathers out hey. there. Um, and and so a lot of people who are who are excited about this game are in the same place where they, they're able to share this with, with people in their mm. lives who may not have grown up with, with Power Rangers. Right, exactly. It's I, I was going well. to say also younger generation and older generation mm -hmm. okay. because I actually got I play a lot of games with my grandfather. Oh yeah, yeah. So and he's you know in his seventies, mm -hmm. and so that is a great way. Um, but I did find out find out he's a little bit of a, a power gamer or fair weather gamer. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. so okay. so and he'll argue rules with us. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. <laughs> that is hilarious. It's fun to see the family you have in that context. <laughs> yes. Like like how how uh like I realized very quickly that I got my my ability to lose came from the fact that my brothers always beat me when I was oh growing no. up playing board games. Always. Well, they're 14 years older than me, oh, so yep, like they're they're much older than me. That's an advantage. Um so I became a very gracious loser. Like I you know, mm -hmm. I never sulked. I was never, 
because uh, I knew that if that happened, my brothers wouldn't play games with me anymore. And, you know, that, right. that wasn't it. Like, the worst, you know, not playing games is worse than losing. So yeah. I, I could be a good loser. I am a terrible winner. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because I also learned it from my brothers, <laughs> I guess. Um, boom. Ah. Boom. Um, and so I, I'm a bad winner when it comes to games. I am not gracious. I'm not magnanimous. I'm, and okay. now, now I'm, try, I'm trying to be better because I have my little one. Right. And she, I don't want to teach you those habits. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that is hilarious and awesome. And awesome. <laughs> So, <clears throat> when you guys are not here, and you're home, uh-huh. and you meet somebody new, mm-hmm. and they ask you, oh, so what do you do? What is the, what's the stereotypical response to when you say, oh, I work in the board game industry, or I, uh, I paint miniatures, or... Well, uh, I don't know. I usually like to start off that, uh, you know, I paint toys for a living. Like, okay. I paint tiny little men. So that's my joke is I start off to break it in for people that kind of have no idea. Right. And then, you know, you get the typical response of when you explain board games and you're like, oh, so you mean Monopoly. Yep. Uh, that's the normal response <laughs> yes. that we usually get. And we're like, no, 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 more like Dungeons and Dragons, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So it's easier for people to understand Dungeons and Dragons now right, than exactly. before. Exactly. I mean, just generally. Um, Cocktail parties are interesting. Like, I think people get it. Like, tabletop uh, Dungeons and Dragons being like covered in the news and and games like Wingspan and, and yeah. on in the you know New York Times that sort of thing. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Wow, New, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. New York Times and the New Yorker are covering Dungeons and Dragons wow. articles. Yeah. So, and the, a lot of the sites that traditionally did video games are now covering board games. Right. Yeah. So. So it's a little easier for people of my generation. My mom doesn't understand what I do at all. <laughs> oh, um, no. She, I think she still thinks that I, like, I don't have a job because all I do is get toys in the mail. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so she comes into my house and she doesn't understand, like, the grown-ups live here uh, as well. And so so she, she's old school, though. God bless her. She's, she, she made it possible for me to work in an industry that, Right. that I can do this. I can l- play games yep. and love games right. and be excited about games and talk to people about games um, for a living because, you know, she she sacrificed to make that happen for me. That's awesome. Um, so so I appreciate that to, to every end of the earth. But generally, I think that I get to tell people I'm a professional fangirl. And professional fangirl. I'm a professional fangirl. I'm a professional fangirl of games. I'm a professional fangirl. And so I can... uh, People get... I think in an age of YouTube, people get that a little bit more. They understand. Yeah, that that can be a thing. Right. Um, And so so that... uh, The reactions aren't... They aren't aren't as extreme as they used to be, I'm sure. Again, again, I think it's also generationally. Yeah. Because when I talk to people in my age range, which is... 40s and above Mm -hmm. right the uh, again like you said oh like monopoly or Mm -hmm. oh like sorry or uh, once in a while i'll get and bless them i get risk and i thank them for that (laughs) oh (laughs) but it's always monopoly or trouble or the game of life and that's fine because at least they have they have a connection to board games exactly through past experience and i and you can absolutely build off that uh that that that, uh, response and be like Actually, yes, very much like right. Monopoly. But did you know yes. that we yes. have uh, that the, the industry itself has grown well beyond that? There, there's a game for everybody. There is. Yes. I go into like, like what kind of shows do you prefer to watch? Right. Yeah. You know? And if they're like, oh, I'm a big fan of like CSI, and I, like, oh, I got a game for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You know? Yep. Perfect. Well, I mean, I think that's the other thing, right? We we live now in a, a time where. We're lucky in board games that we don't have the necessarily the emotional baggage. Like Dungeons, I don't think the Satanic Panic is a risk anymore. No, necessarily. I, I really no. don't think so. Like I think they're doing that. That's what's happening. Like it hasn't. We haven't moved on past that. Like video games still have that baggage, right? Right, right. But we I, we did that. Like we did that before video yeah, games were like even some years eight ago. bit. So <laughs> so we're past that now. And so instead, people are they tend to view 
tabletop games as very much more positively. Absolutely. And so it's it's it for me it's it's a easier conversation. And people are more receptive, I feel like. They really are. What's uh what's your like holy grail? My holy grail of, of board games like I, I assume, and I, I, hate, I hate to use that word assume, but I assume that we all have a board game that, or something old in our collection. Oh, okay. Or something that is a, like, I will never get rid of that game. Because that's, that's the game that that's did this. That's a good this. question. I don't know. I, uh, so, I have a few, uh, like, moment touch points for me. I am... Um, I will always have a soft spot for the old Space Hulk, like the Space Hulk released yeah. in the, the, the early aughts mm -hmm. um, with the crazy board and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that just came, it came at the right time. Um, for me, it was the, uh, it was a moment in time when I was working for Games Workshop, it became available. Mm -hmm. It was something that was like, it introduced me to Space Hulk and it was, I know for a lot of people who had first touched Warhammer, that was like the way they got into it too, like the board game version of that. Right. Um, so let me connect with those those folks. Um, so that's like for me, that's an emotional touch point. That's a game that that will always have meaning for me. Okay. Um, and I will. I have. I also have a, a an emotional. I have a. I have a connection with. Um, with the with Wiz Kids games, uh, okay. Wiz Kids. When I first got on Geek and Sundry, they were they were the first company to say, "Hey Terry, why don't you make some stuff with our stuff?" And I was it was it was such a moment of validation. Um, okay. So so I uh, Wiz Kids. Now I get to work. We're doing uh, at Renegade. We're doing stuff with Wiz Kids miniatures coming up. That's awesome. Right. Um, Wardlings. Wardlings, which is a really excited 5e compatible uh, expansion using the Wardlings miniature. So, mm -hmm. so it's like it's like coming full circle, um, and uh, and I have to, I I have to call out to. So before I worked for Renegade Games, I was in Geek and Sundry. I moved across the continent, and uh, the game that I used to measure a lot of the other games because I had to I had to really evaluate my board game collection and okay. figure out what was coming with me and what wasn't. <laughs> Uh, and it was a hard <laughs> process. Uh, Gravwell, which was which I learned, uh, was the first Ooh. Renegade Game Studios game oh, that wow. we had. Um, that was the game that I brought with me. Uh, that was one of the games that made the cut, and so like it, and okay. it's it was such a good game. And I, I think for me that particular board game, it it has that that kind of roll and move feel that right. is traditionally like not very really looked at looked at well highly as a mechanic in, in board games um, but it it does it so differently and fresh and it feels when you play it it feels like very like you're, you still have meaningful choices and that that still appeals to me it's a game that still hits my table all the time because I think it's really interesting and it's easy to forget that you have these really great classic games right right that are out there that that um, that don't get looked at the same way you okay. don't revisit them yeah, that's How true. about you? Um, so I think that you guys are going to think I sound like a broken record <laughs> when I keep talking about uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Uh, and, and of course, I mentioned my uncle. Um, he gave me some of his modules, okay. like first edition and second edition, and then player's handbooks. Okay. So I have those on my shelf. Right. Um, and I can honestly say that I, wow. I haven't been really... I've been in the gaming industry for a while, but because I got into it and I was, you know, in my early 20s, yeah. I don't really have anything besides that that I would think is vintage. Okay. So I do have, I mean, for me, I think it's more miniatures because I do have some, when I first started painting, I have some like old, really old Grenadier dragons and things oh, that I picked nice. up, right? Like old school lead. Yes. The, yes. This so is for me, beautiful. yeah. Yep. It's more about the miniatures. So I have those kind of like um, squirreled away and uh, I'm saving them for a rainy day. Um, okay. When when I'm when I'm a better painter. <laughs> oh, we all tell ourselves that. When I'm a better painter, we all tell ourselves that. That's right? tomorrow. I know. You are a better painter tomorrow <laughs> than you were yesterday. So that's true. How about you, Rick? Um. So for me, like a game again. I'm. I will always go back to Dungeons and Dragons as well. In okay. That good. I don't feel so bad. Um. 
as far as like having, I do have some vintage D&D stuff, some first edition, and I also have some pre-first edition. Okay. Oh my. The, the old oh. pamphlets. Oh. Yeah, the yeah. The oh. Greyhawk pamphlet. And Did those come with the the paint schemes as well? Because I know sometimes like the boxes came with the the paint by, told you what to use, what colors Oh no, these aren't miniatures. Oh, no miniatures. No, these are the actual booklets that be before a player's handbook. Oh, these yeah. These are little oh, pamphlet I've booklets. Seen, I saw those yeah. in like the Gen Con, yes. like Hall of Fame stuff yes. they have now, the museum. Yeah. So I have I have a set of those. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, and then uh, I have my, it's just kind of weird. I have these floor games okay. that are dexterity games yeah. from the early 80s. Yeah. That, like they're literally the size of this table in a box. Right? Oh my goodness! And you goodness. pull it out, and I have the size of this table. Yes, there. It's wide like what? this, and as long as this table. How? And wow. it's a flicking game, but you have battleships, and you, and you flick across the table, to your friend who that has battleships. That is really really neat. And uh, it's a, it's an old game. Oh uh, my gosh! My my cousins and I used to play it when we were kids. We'd, that we'd is get, really We'd go into cool. the living room, set it up. Our parents would be like, "Get that stuff out of here! <laughs> uh, you're making a mess." And um, <laughs> I love your old timey voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is my, this is my on screen voice. My, my regular voice is like, why are you kids on my lawn? <laughs> <Not> my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I have have, have uh, a couple of those old old games. And then I have an original Jeopardy board game. Whoa. Which is from like and it, it looks like uh, it's from the 60s. Oh, wow. Um, I go to a lot of flea markets and uh, like toy shows, like right. old school toy shows, looking right. for old board games. Okay. Oh wow! And then like sometimes you you can find those in thrift stores yep. too, right? Absolutely. Um, I know. Is it is it Dark Tower is the one that came out in the eighties? Is that the one where With it the coffin? has? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have that. Oh my! And my dad has that, and he just he loves it, and he had to he found a copy, but it. Uh, needed to be restored because the tower, you know, it has the old electronics in it. Yep. And so there's actually, I guess, somebody on eBay that uh, specifically restores those circuit boards for that. And so he paid like the hundred dollars to have awesome. it restored. Yeah. That in uh, Fireball Island, which actually. Uh, what is that game? What is that game? <laughs> oh. I actually. I, I love that game. Uh, I actually picked up the new the, the new restoration one. Yeah, the restoration version, games hey? version uh, for my husband because <gasps> he really, of really course. wanted it. Yep. Of course. So. Oh, really? Oh, that's exciting. See? So Johnny, our videographer, camera producer behind the behind the screen, yeah. uh, got really excited for that game when it went to Kickstarter. Got a copy of it. And the very first show where they actually had it for sale, he bought another copy to stow away because he knows that he's going to play the, the crepes out of the one that he got. <laughs> so that when his That's son is old enough, he can he'll play the other one or give right, the other one to him. Right, oh. exactly. Oh. Happy Father's Day. Oh, That's amazing. Day. Yes, happy Father's Day. No, that's fantastic. That's foresight, though, too. Yep. Like, I don't know how many games I've played I've played to death out of love. Yes. There are a lot of miniatures that I have built many, many times over and over and over <laughs> again uh, because I've loved them too much. Um, I've, and I've dropped them <laughs> mostly. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that's part of the reason why like, I'm just so... I, I get happy now when I see innovations in miniatures because... These days, man, these minis are strong and yeah. tough. And, yep. like, I'm not afraid of, like, catching a sleeve on them and pulling them off the table. Well, and even something like this, if this falls on the floor, this isn't, I, I would it's hope not, it's not going to fall it's apart, It's not going right? to break apart, no. Right. I have, they're super durable. They're super durable. They're super comfortable to, like, play with. They're, the, it feel like, sometimes I think that, that the technology has made it so that our playthings can feel like playthings. Right. Again. Mm. Right. Can you hand me the black, please? I, oh, yeah. And just so you guys know, we've only got three minutes left. Oh, my left. gosh. <gasps> oh, no. Wait, wait. Race, 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 we, we race, not, race, race, is race. It a, is it a contest? It is, is not. It is <laughs> not, not a contest. contest. Oh. No. I, I, uh, you know, the contest was just for us to have fun. And then at the end of the show, who had the most fun? And I'll true. tell you who it is. It'll be Johnny. 
Uh, <laughs> the real, the real, the real finished painted minis were the friends we made along the way. That's true. That's right. It's the journey, right? It's the journey. I think you said that at the start. Oh, it, yes. It, it, it's your kind of your mantra. Yeah. It, I well, I think it's because I painting minis has it's been a constant in my life for so long that I've had to change my approach to it. Right. With the change, like as time has gone on and my life situation has changed. Right. 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 So, so it made, it's made me appreciate like the different aspects of it because I've, I've seen all those aspects growing, growing as a player and growing as a painter. Yeah, so I don't think I had any metallics for the metal that's pieces. That's okay. But, no, um, that's all right. So as we come to the end of our episode, what do you guys think is going to be uh, the next big Renegade game that's going to, I mean, because this, this is it right now. This is the big Renegade game it, to me. It's one of the big ones. We've got, a, we've got some exciting stuff happening, uh, coming out, available um, during the month of August because that, that happens. Is, it, is, that, a, Gen is, Con, is right? that a big day? Is that a big month? It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing yeah. that happens. You guys should be paying attention. August, August. things happen. Uh, so <laughs> the the designer who did this also will be, will be we are br excited to bring to friendly local game stores everywhere, uh, Bargain Quest from Jonathan Ying as well. Okay. So that is a very exciting, for you who love Dungeons and Dragons. Right, right, right. Um, this takes that fantasy adventure trope and turns it on he its head. So instead of trying to be the adventurer selling the dragon, you're the shopkeeper selling items to that to the adventurer. adventurer. That's awesome. Poster. And there, as as you want to make sure the guys here are probably going to defeat the dragon, who's going to destroy the town you're in. Right, right. Find the stuff they need, but you also kind of you got to watch your bottom line. So you right. want to be profitable, and right. so it's really delightful. Um, beautiful game. I love that. Um, that's really fun, really interesting, very different, is that, and really exciting. Is that game also by the same? Yes, it's Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan no. Ying. Um, we've got a bunch more. We we just so if you did free RPG day yesterday with your friendly local game store, which everybody should have which done. Everyone should have done. <laughs> uh, you'll notice you might have gotten the uh, kids on bikes uh, free RPG day uh, module. If you flipped it over, you may have noticed on the back. There is this little thing called Tunes in Space. <laughs> um, Tunes so, in Space. So that'll be coming out. <laughs> uh, we'll be announcing it officially. That's coming out soon. We're, we're really excited. There's a lot. So whether you're a role player, right. you're a lighter family uh, gamer, mm. you're a miniature tabletop gamer, there are a number of really exciting games coming out in August that that we're really excited to to, to show you and talk so about much and good share stuff. With. it's really fun yeah renegade really is fun. knocking out of the park they've been doing it every year since since they opened their doors yeah <laughs> it's been ridiculously awesome watching their growth oh it's it we're coming up on five years at Gen yeah. Con that will be our five fifth year anniversary and really excited to to celebrate and share yeah. it with with fans yeah. and gamers that's so. awesome so that's awesome. again real quick before we, we, yeah. we sign off what yeah. tell us where people can find you and your patreon and all that stuff okay so the patreon again is miniature monthly uh, you can find myself and Aaron Lovejoy and Matt DiPietro, Uh so awesome lineup of painters you can find us on patreon Patreon. Uh, it's patreon.com slash miniature monthly. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook. Uh, we have a miniature monthly Facebook page. Okay. Um, I also do a lot of stuff on my personal Facebook page um, under my own name, uh, Elizabeth Beckley. Um, and then on Instagram and Twitter, uh, all of those okay. social media things. All right, yes. perfect. Yep. Well, Elizabeth and Terry, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you so much. I know we didn't have enough time to finish these monstrous miniatures because yes. these are some big ones. And it was a little humid. It and got, we got yeah. close, though. Three yeah. colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they got look, pretty they close. Look great. Yep. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. And for everybody out there watching, thank you for watching. But now I need you to go to gtmgiveaway.com and enter, if you have not done so yet, to win that amazing prize pack you see on your screen right now. Uh, someone in five days will be announced as the winner, and it could be you, but you got to enter to win. Meantime, we'll be back here in just a few more minutes with another episode of Building Character here at Origins Game Fair. Thank you so much for joining us.